Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, as we speak, my friends, a letter is being delivered to the Federal Aviation Agency and the CEOs and chief legal officers of all of the major airlines as well as their insurance companies, putting these aviation entities on notice that they have ignored and acted in contravention of their own federal aviation regulations, namely Part 14, Title 14 of the Code of Federal Regulations, Section 6513, and its guidance, which essentially prohibit the medical clearance of all pilots who have taken non-FDA-approved products. As you may be aware, there are no FDA-approved COVID vaccinations commercially available right now in the United States, which essentially means that every single pilot flying right now who has been vaccinated for COVID-19 in the United States is flying with non-FDA-approved products in their system. These do not issue, do not fly regulations and guidance as they are known clearly state, and I quote, do not issue, do not fly. Aviation medical examiners should not issue medical certificates to people who are using these classes of medications or uh, products. Non-FDA, FDA approved less than 12 months ago. The FAA generally requires at least one year of post-marketing experience with a new drug before consideration for aeromedical certification purposes. This observation period allows time for uncommon but aeromedically significant adverse effects to manifest themselves. The reason for this prohibition cannot be overstated and in fact was just delineated in the federal rules I cited to you. We cannot have aeromedically significant adverse events affecting these pilots while they are in the sky because that doesn't just pose a risk to the pilot themselves, it poses a risk to every American, hundreds of Americans that are flying in that commercial jet with them. At this point, the FAA, all I can say is they have turned a blind eye, not just to the fact that these pilots are flying with newly approved products in their system that they should wait a year before allowing to occur, but with wholly unapproved FDA products, uh, sorry, FAA products in their system. Worse, the FAA is allowing certain carriers to actually mandate these vaccines in violation of not just the regulation I just stated, but also black letter federal law, the Emergency Use Authorization Act, which prohibits any mandating of a product while it is still in the experimental phase. At this point, we are aware of aeromedically significant adverse effects that have occurred and will likely keep occurring with these pilot populations. There was one pilot who will be speaking shortly who once he got up in the sky, quote, felt an extreme burst of pressure in his brain, which caused him to become dizzy, shaking, nauseous, and then to essentially black out at the control such that he had zero memory of landing that plane. You will hear from this pilot in just a moment. His name is Cody Flint. He is the father of two young children. His career has been wrecked. Everything he worked for has been wrecked by virtue of what you just heard. I'm gonna to quote to you as well another couple of pilot stories so you can understand the significance of what we are talking about. These stories were taken from the Vaccine Adverse Event Reporting System, also known as VAERS. On the morning of March 15th, 2021, I noted that I had no vision in my right eye. As a commercial pilot, I considered this to be an emergency. Different pilot. Symptoms began almost immediately, constant dizziness, body aches, overall weakness. Later, I woke up with severe chest pain and difficulty breathing. Another pilot, two days after my second shot, I had a blood clot in my left arm and five days later, a heart attack. I'm a pilot with EKGs that I get yearly. I could go on at this point, but suffice to say that the list of severe adverse health effects is absolutely horrifying. We are talking myocardial infarctions, also known as a heart attack, atrial fibrillation, pericarditis, swelling of the sac around the heart, brain swelling, elevated intracranial pressure on the brain stem and spine, subarachnoid hemorrhages, also known as a stroke or a brain bleed, and blindness. Half of the pilots I just referenced had brain events occur. The other half had cardiovascular events occur. And in more than half of those pilot stories, those things were listed by VAERS or their doctors as being life-threatening, permanently disabling, or both. What I think we can all agree on at this point is that none of those things are health events that we would want our commercial airline pilot to be experiencing in the air. In the case of commercial pilot Will Wolf, he didn't want the jab. He felt coerced to get it by his large carrier based in Dallas, and he is now dead. 
His path to the grave began with a stroke. I believe what happened here, although I don't know, but I think the attorneys who are signing the 10-page letter that we are sending right now to the FAA it is being delivered as we speak. I believe what we are going to find out is that this administration pressured the airline industry and that the airline industry caved and ignored their own rules and actually violated the protocols and the federal regulations that forced, would have forestalled the events we are now seeing. At this point, I would say it is impossible for the aviation industry to not know what I am talking about. But in case they are maintaining their ignorance, we are putting them on notice today. And by we, I mean Attorney Tom Renz, I mean Attorney Robert Kennedy Jr., I mean Attorney Mary Holland, I mean Dr. renowned cardiac surgeon, Dr. Peter McCullough, I mean Dr. Ryan Cole, and I mean two military flight surgeons in the U.S. Army, one of whom was deployed five times, has a Purple Heart, a Bronze Star, and myriad other uh, uh, awards to his name. These people are sounding the alarm, and what they are saying at this point is this cannot, cannot be countenanced any further. I think the FAA is playing a game of Russian roulette and betting the farm on the fact that they're going to sweep this under the car carpet because they have what is known as pilot redundancy in the cockpit. And they are hoping that when these events occur, the second co-pilot can take over or the autopilot system can take over. Let me explain to you in nothing if not clear terms where that breaks down. There are times where the pilot is actually actively flying the plane. When they are 300 feet above the tarmac on approach for landing, they are actively flying that plane and they need to keep those wings level. And if you see a severe seizure, which is what began pilot Will Wolf's path to the grave, a tonic-clonic seizure, and now that pilot is jerking at the controls and a wing dips and it catches an edge, you now have an entire 747 full of innocent American passengers and our kids cartwheeling down the tarmac. We cannot bet on pilot redundancy. We cannot bet that there will be somebody there like there was with the Calgary flight a couple of weeks ago to bring that plane home when the first pilot loses consciousness. As the Department of Justice said in January of this year in regards to the Boeing 737 issue, you cannot in an airline industry countenance misleading statements, half-truths or omissions, or be less than fully transparent in an industry where the stakes are this high. The public needs to be, quote, confident that the government regulators are effectively doing their job as safety is of paramount importance in the commercial aviation industry. Right now, in my humble opinion, the aviation industry is not being fully transparent. They are not effectively doing their jobs. And today, we, the American flying public, doctors with credentials that will not stop, lawyers with credentials that will not stop, are calling on this industry to stop putting pilots at risk, to immediately rectify this problem by medically recertifying these pilots with cardiac EKGs, with cardiac MRIs, and with, with, with what is known as a D-dimer test, which tests for clotting, to ensure that when we get in an airplane, we can have trust that the people behind those cockpit doors are themselves safe.